This movie is a complete pattern for making ladies hem tuck socks on a 60 slot cylinder of the circular sock machine. Number one or light number two sock yarns are suitable. I get the gauge that I prefer using number one plus a skinny run along strand of lycra. You will see me working mostly with this yarn in this video, but the other sock yarns that are scrolling past you are ones I also use the same pattern with and get good results. To make this a watchable length with all the information you need, here's how I'm going to approach it. If you need help with any of the basic skills, casting on, knitting the heel, knitting the toe, yarn management, getting the gauge, etc., those details are all covered in their own videos. So this one won't elaborate on the skills. We will go through very fast with the demo. The focus here is on the numbers. Let's do go over a few basics before we begin. The 60 needle cylinder makes about an eight inch tube in the yarns that I'm using. If that is not what you're getting, or an eight inch tube won't fit the feet of the lady that you're knitting for, this is the video that will help you adjust matters. We begin and end each sock with waist yarn. It may be reused several times and it does not have to be perfect knitting. As long as you know you can get perfect knitting, you'll see flaws in my waist yarn rows sometimes. We leave the waist yarn in place while all the knitting takes place and then snip it as shown in several places and pull out the small segments to free the sock when it's off of the machine. For the tubular portions of the socks, this is the threading. We engage the heel spring or tension spring for the heels and toes. Hand knitting yarn should be rewound into a cake or cone before beginning. Some sort of rather heavy heel weight is required or some method of pulling down the heel pouch. You will see me using these and instructions to make them are in the Cool Tools, Cheap Tricks and More book. So with a waist yarn tube on the machine and weights engaged, we change over to the main yarn. Always knit that first main yarn row with care. After that, you can speed up. I like 20 row hems on the top. That gives you about an inch of hem. Less than that's not really enough to do a good job. You can go up to twice that many, but more isn't really a good idea in most cases either because of the way it fits the leg. Now we work all the way around the cylinder, lifting the very first row of main yarn stitches. And this is why we like to use contrasting waist yarn to make it easy to find those stitches. And the stitches get hung on the same needles that are still in work right above them. When all are hung, again, the first round with the two sets of stitches on the needles should be done very carefully. And after that, you can knit the leg rounds pretty fast. I like a 50 round leg portion for ladies. That produces a sock top that extends between six and seven inches above the heel. Not the ground, the heel. The first part of the heel where we short row in contributes to the length of the sock above the floor. It adds about two inches. We short row in beginning with 30 needles in work. Many cylinders have marks on them to show you where half of the needles are. My 60 slot cylinder has one mark. The other one must have worn off over the years, so I have to count over. A little nail polish will fix that one of these days. At the end of each row, the last needle that knitted is put into hold by lifting it. Of course, we must frequently move the sock weights up so that the pouch of fabric that's forming to shape the heel still has weight on it because this kind of machine has no way of knitting off the stitches reliably without weight on it. After every short row, the final needle that knitted goes up into hold. Until when the last needle is pushed up into hold, only 10 needles remain in work. Here comes the last short rowing in row. When we put that final needle into hold, before knitting back in the other direction, we place one back into work on the opposite side. After this, before knitting each row, one needle on the side away from the yarn carrier is returned to work until all 30 heel needles have knitted at least one time. 
At that point, it's time to return the held needles to work and resume knitting in the round. The rows after the heel are the rows that make the length of the foot. I should say rounds, really. And here is where precise fitting and measurements come in. Note that partway through the final row, you will have to start returning needles to work because if you knit all the way around, you don't have access to the position you need to be in to return them to work. Figuring out exactly how many rows you need for the foot is pure arithmetic based on row gauge, but I've used my Sock and Nations book and adapted the information there to give you two possible gauges that are likely and will work. Generally, I get either 9 or 10 rounds per inch once the fabric has relaxed and been washed, or some number in between, like 9.6. In this chart, American sizes for women, 5 through 10, run down the left, along with the total length in inches with which those sizes correspond. So my friends from elsewhere in the world can manage a measurement in inches and still make use of the chart. The next two columns show the best number of rounds to try at 9 rounds per inch and 10 rounds per inch between the heel and the toe section. Even if your row gauge isn't perfectly represented here, say you're getting 9.5 rows per inch, the chart can still help you. Let's look at size 7, third line down. The difference between 9 and 10 rounds per inch means that we should knit 41 versus 50 rows. So I would knit 45 or 6 for my first try. Once the decision is made, foot length is easy. Just knit the rounds you've decided on. Then hang the heel weights again and repeat the he operation of knitting the heel exactly because the toe is a repetition of the heel. Do remember to engage the tension spring for the toe. When the toe is complete, knit a few rounds of waist yarn and either go on to knitting sock number two or take the work off of the machine and close the toes. We usually do this by kitchener stitching, also called grafting, and if you need a little help with that, this video is up in the sock machine list and will help you. If you want to design your own socks completely from scratch using unique gauges and sizes, Look for this video. In addition to the in-depth movies on top hems and heels, these two movies show the whole process of knitting the sock more slowly with more video, but they do not include the numbers. You'll need to take the numbers that you either created yourself or from this video.